Joining us now to take this a little bit further is former Secretary of Defense and former Secretary of the Army, Mark Esper. Um, Mr. Secretary, thank you for being with us. Let's talk about what would happen with NATO. Where does Donald Trump stand on NATO, and what would that mean for the U.S.? Well, first of all, good to be with you uh, this afternoon, Katie. Um, look, with regard to NATO, and, and having lived through this with him, uh, I think one of the first things that would happen is he would withdraw support for Ukraine. And, uh, of course, if that were to happen, I think the, the whole effort to support Ukraine and its war against Russia would, would eventually crumble because the United States is kind of like the big block in the Jenga Tower. You pull us out and everything else collapses. But I think his next move would be to, uh, to begin pulling us out of NATO, certainly troops out of NATO countries, um, and, uh, and eventually that could cause the collapse of the alliance. And that's exactly what Vladimir Putin would love to see, right? Is, um, is the collapse of, uh, of NATO. So, and then the next look would be, does he start looking, as he would discuss with me and others at the time, does he look to pull troops out of Korea, out of Japan, and out of other countries who are allied with us? So look, it's, it's quite disconcerting from a national security standpoint. What does it mean for the U.S. if we're out of NATO and we're no longer a, a part of a system that offers protection in return for our protection? Well, first and foremost, those regions of the world are less secure. So you'd have the Baltic states, the Poland, Poland Romania, other frontline states vulnerable to Russian aggression. Uh, you would see the same in Asia in different ways from the uh, Chinese Communist Party. And eventually, of course, that all ripples back to us. The United States would be less secure as well. And I would think you know, it, would, it would be a retreat from the global stage after 75 years of leadership around the world since the end of World War II that America would withdraw. And uh, I, I think when that happens, you would see the international uh, rules and norms that have been built up since that time uh, eventually uh, fade away and crumble as well. So, I, look, it would be a very bad situation. I won't say as far as dystopian, but you would see so much of what we've come to know and experience, so much of the global order, the rules, the regulations, the norms that have made us all prosperous and allow us to advance and grow over the decades to really slowly uh, erode and collapse. Who do you think his military officials would be? What kind of people? You know, I don't know. There are some of the, you know, the, the really Trump loyalists who, at the end of the last term, uh, were re really vying for cabinet slots uh, in the future. Uh, they thought he would be in a second term. Folks like his former national security advisor, Robert O'Brien, his acting DNI, Rick Grinnell, others in there uh, that, that, that kind of had more senior positions in the administration. I think you'll see a lot of those people come back. And, you know, as I said, I think the, uh, the first year of a uh, second Trump administration will look much like the last year if not the last few months of the last Trump administration. And as your reporter said, I think one of the big lessons he learned is, you, you know, people are policy. And uh, the litmus test going forward will be loyalty first. And uh, competence will be somewhere way down the list. And that's troubling. And, and, and as compared to having, you know, maybe a year, seven, eight months, which is when Trump really kicked into a, a different gear in 2020, he'll have four years to go at it and really chip away at the institutions of government, at, at our norms. He'll be able to, you know, enact his policy of revenge that he's been talking about in retribution. And look, it's, it's, it's quite a dangerous time for our democracy if that were to, to, to happen. Let me ask you if you could expand on that. For, for those of us who don't remember what the last six months of, of his administration looked like, I mean, up until January 6th at least, um, what do you remember? What was going on then? Well, I talk about this in my memoir that, uh, you know, after he beat impeachment in what January, February 2020, that's when he started bringing people into real loyalists into the back into the administration. So Mark Meadows came from Capitol Hill to be chief of staff. He brings back Johnny McEntee to be his head of personnel. He brings Rick Grinnell in from Germany uh, and, and he, he just forms a new consensus. And these people then begin chipping away at at, uh, I would say, the competent people who were in the departments and agencies had come after uh, Department of Homeland Security came after DOD eventually. And it was a, around that time when, as I recount in my book, and I think I, you and I have talked before, you know, he had conversations with me asking about, you know, can we shoot missiles into Mexico? It was about deploying a quarter million troops to the border. You know, eventually it culminated the, the, the long break, simmering break between he and myself in June of 2020 when he wanted to deploy active duty troops on the street of Washington, D.C., and, and suggested actually that we we shoot American um, uh, Americans in the street. So, I mean, that's kind of more what you see, this very uh, hyper-aggressive behavior and this, uh, you, you know, willingness to flaunt norms and, and rules, if you will.